welcome to Free Cheese, episode 483. I'm your Joe Dix, Joe Mark Arkostiniak. What's up? Matt Selner. Hello. The Free Cheese is a weekly video game podcast about video games brought to you once a week by thefreecheese.com. Two episodes remain in season 10, where we are playing and ranking a list of 45? Is that where we're at? 45 video games this year? Maybe. We are on our penultimate game this week with Bomberman 93. Before we dive in, I would like to know, Mark, what's a better name? PC Engine or TurboGrafx-16? TurboGrafx-16. Oh, wow. Interesting. PC Engine is just... All right, yeah. It is a PC Engine. Good job. Turbo graphics, though. The superior name. Feels It feels more distinctive. Yeah, that makes sense. And then for an engine name, it's not even a good engine name. It feels like, I, like, like Frostbite sounds sexier than PC Engine. Well, I am when you see Frostbite written out, right? It's, isn't that with a Y? Is it B-Y-T-E? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right? So that's exactly. It's even better. Like, not to call them out, but isn't there a game company just called That Game Company or something like that? That mm-hmm. is, yes. There is that. So it's like, all right. Yeah. Cute. <laughs> Matt, should all video game controllers have a turbo button? Oh. Yeah. Do you, I don't know where, where would you would put it. I don't exactly. Know. <laughs> where would you do that today on a um, modern? So, I will say this. A lot of the, like, the pro controllers and those, like, mod extensions always have those, like, paddles on the back. Which sure, would mimic sure. kind of like an N64Z. You could implement something like that, uh, one paddle on each side where you can map turbo to a couple different buttons. That'd be pretty good. I wouldn't hate that. Uh, So yeah, I guess. Yeah, that. Bomberman 93, developed by Hudson Soft, published by Hudson Soft, first released for the PC Engine, December 11th, 1992. Happy 30th anniversary, Bomberman 93. It then came to North America on the TurboGrafx-16 the following spring in March of 1993. If you're holding a copy of this game, you can read the back of the box, which says, Tension! Strategy! Action! Excitement! Bomberman's back! You can now battle against up to four computer-controlled mechanic... I'm sorry, (laughs) maniacs by yourself for the Ultimate 5 Bomberman mode. Choose from seven exciting new stages with loads of new power-up items like warps, conveyor belts, revolving doors, and even kicking bombs. Or for portable thrills, go head-to-head against a friend using Turbo Express for non-stop action. The best competitive game is back and it's more intense than ever. So I'm not an idiot. It does say warps, not warps. I don't know if that's a weird translation thing, you know, maybe on the maybe. back of the PC Engine box it said, like, Uapus or something, or I don't know how they spelled it, that, but maybe it translated weird and they just thought it was warps, but I believe it's warps, if I'm not mistaken. That's what I would go with. I would go with that, too. Matt, what's your history with Bomberman? I am a man who played Super Bomberman 4 or 5. I don't know, and I should have looked at the cart uh, before hitting record. Uh, But I played that on the Super Nintendo as a kid. Um, And I remember being really frustrated by that game because I did not get to play the multiplayer a lot. Uh, And when I did, it was only with one other person. So it wasn't necessarily the most fun of times. I did always like the multiplayer bot battles better than the single player mode. Uh, But, you know, how many bot battles in a row are you going to do before you kind of get bored? Um, But no, like, when you play with other people and, um, you know, like, chaos, just chaos ensues. And I think that's when um, a game like this shines. But yeah, anyway, to answer your question, Super Bomberman 4 or 5. (laughs) SNES. Did you keep going after Super Bomberman? Did you play no. any other ones? No, that was first and last. Yeah, my, yeah. Wow. For for what I remember, yeah. Interesting. 
Now, Mark, I would assume you were a big fan of Bomberman 64. Which, oh, 64? Because yeah. there, there, there's two games on there, and I get them confused. Because there's, there's Bomberman 64, and I think there's Bomberman World. And one is more like a 3D platformer. Um, I'm... Mm. Yeah, I forget which is which now. I think I knew it before I asked you, and now I'm confused. I think uh, <laughs> I'm thinking of more of the adventure style one, right? Where you're actually like going through and platforming, and you are Bomberman. That seems like a Mark game to me. I didn't get to play much of that, but yes, you're not wrong in that assumption. That is um, that that is. But uh, yeah, funny enough. Um, I think where where Matt started was also where where I had started. Super, Super Nintendo. Nintendo. Did you like it? Did you like single player any more than Matt did, or were you always multiplayer? Um, I liked. I preferred to single player. Well, co op rather. Um, that 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 was fun to have. It was. I was either playing with like my cousin because he he owned it, or I would play with one of my brothers, and we would just kind of go through and just have fun with it um the verses we didn't do too much of if i if i did do that i was always playing against the the computer players is there another game like bomberman that either of you prefer i think there's a lot of things like we played chameleon twist earlier this year not that that's super pop but like i just think of like these kind of more arcade character mascot games obviously bomberman has transformed through the years but bomberman's kind of always been you know, consistent uh, in its, like, puzzle action gameplay. Uh, one that comes to mind for me that I think I've really only recently fallen in love with is Mr. Driller, um, which answer. it just, there's something fun and addictive about it that you could just kind of play that game forever, and I feel like a good Bomberman is the same way. Is there something in that vein that either of you are like, yeah, that's my, you know, like, Maybe it's not Bomberman, but what's your that kind of game? Obviously, Blanks. You think Blanks in yeah, like Blanks. a... <laughs> you know, the puzzle mechanic of making sure you match three gems to get the item you may That's or may not need. Of, yeah. Yes. Yeah. I have to edit this part out now. <laughs> I already did. Yeah, it's gone. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I'm thinking like a... I don't know why I'm stuck in the Namco with... Uh, dig dug and whatnot but yeah like is there like something like that like bomberman obviously got its roots in load runner um and uh, mr drizzler's a good answer i i my mind goes to bust a move oh yeah that's a you I feel like for... if tomorrow they said hey here's a new bust a move you'd be stoked i wouldn't hate it no, I, I mean, like I that's would... where I'm at with Bomberman, right? Like if tomorrow, yeah. which I mean, thankfully Konami has kind of that's the one game that Konami's been actually putting out in the last few years is Bomberman related titles, um, and that's been the thing. Like when the Switch lineup, the launch lineup got revealed, and we were getting Super Bomberman R, it was like, wait, what? Yeah. <laughs> huh? <laughs> um, and since then we've had a few games in the franchise, which is cool. Yeah, I mean, with uh, Bust a Move, like, they kept the characters, Bub and Bob, from Bubble Bobble. Right. just kind of turned into that, so it's it, it's funny how how that turns out. Like, Byron from Load Runner, Bust a Move is kind of doing that. Mr. Driller, I guess, from Dig Dug, but... It did pull from Dig Dug, yeah. But, but the Dig Dug character is in Mr. Driller, so... They all kind of evolve in some way. Matt, anything besides Blinks? Uh, no, Blinks is all you know, thing on my mind. I struggle. I know I'm struggling to think. Like I can't think of many mascot like platformers, but like they're not just straight platformers. They have like um, like a I don't know, like something like you, Mister Driller was probably perfect, like for the vein of answer. I, you could probably say Pac Man. Uh, that's another good answer. Damn it. Yeah. 
I'm just an idiot. Okay. All right, so you've proven I'm just an idiot, and now I no, can't give you. That one's yours. That's it. <laughs> no, I don't want it. it. Matt just said it. Like, <laughs> um, yeah, we since we're editing parts of this podcast, <laughs> <what>? <laughs> we're just splicing in and out. <laughs> Mark answers for Matt. So Bomberman '93 is uh, an interesting game. It's the naming convention would have you believe that this was the start of or continuation of an annual series uh but in fact this was like the fifth or sixth game in a row since 1990 uh oddly enough uh bomber man kind of kicked off with multiple games annually from 1990 through 2010 um this was just the first one to return to turbo graphics and kind of Really, I think, if you look at the releases just prior to this, this is the best of them up to date. I think some of the ones that followed maybe did some different things. I think Saturn Bomberman is quite good. Um, but Bomberman 93 was the, I think, the first, like, oh, gosh, I can't think. It's like the uh, like the Tony Hawk 3 of Bomberman games, where, like, it just finally put everything together in the right way it hit a new platform it kept the old stuff that was working added new ideas and really refined it i feel like that's bomberman 3 i'm sorry bomberman 93 um and the game as read from the back of the box is split up between a single player mode with multiplayer um the single player mode is seven worlds each with eight stages they're all you know, i mean i guess if you're unfamiliar with bomberman uh, a stage in Bomberman is a randomized map that usually, in a standard Bomberman map, is going to have sort of a grid that you can walk through, and then there are blocks that fill in gaps between the grid to block off your movement. And you use bombs to explode the blockers and move your way through. There are usually, especially in a single-player version of the game, there are enemies on the stages that you must kill. Um, in this particular game, you want to defeat all enemies on screen and uncover the portal that lets you warp to the next stage. Once you work your way through all eight stages, you reach the final boss. Uh, on the eighth stage, you f defeat the boss of that particular world, and then you move on to the next world. Um, there's also a story at bay here, um, but... The Bomberman story stuff has always been a little bit outside of my reach. Not that it's something super deep, but kind of like a Puyo Puyo, where like I was just about this to say that. Whole, yeah, like <laughs> it's there, but I don't think I care to know it. I, people that want to, I think that's great for them, but I don't need to. Um, and yeah, did either of you play around the single player? with this uh this time around or uh i watched a little bit of like a long play of it i skipped from playing it but it was kind of what i envisioned it being which is what you perfectly just described you eliminate enemies on the screen you destroy blocks to look for power-ups you go to the warp thing and then at the end i think was the eight stages on the eighth stage in a world you face a boss mm -hmm. which has some kind of little different mechanic twist to it. Right, right. Um, which is likely exactly what you played on the Super Nintendo. Very you close know. to it, yeah. In, I think in, the level yeah. design was a little bit more, like, maybe L-shaped or something like that. But, uh, yeah, essentially. Mark, what about you? Any time spent with single player this time around? Uh, no. I basically... Did the same thing as Matt, but uh, f from what I was watching, um, yeah, very not too different from the from the Super Nintendo ones. I first, so I guess we can jump into this. Um, but I first played this game because it was added to the Wii Virtual Console, um, and I'm not sure about you, but the Wii Virtual Console was the first time I heard. Or knew the name Turbo Graphics. I bet in hindsight, uh, probably at a Blockbuster or some random video game shop in the '90s, I probably did come across it. But because it didn't have 
Sega or Nintendo or PlayStation on the cover. I probably yeah. didn't pay much attention to Turbo Graphics. Um, being an adult and knowing what those things are now, it's likely because of how expensive the Turbo Graphics was in America. Um, but also, it just never really got a footing the same way that Nintendo and Sega did, and later PlayStation and so on and so on. So the Wii, I remember the virtual console being announced. And I think it's important for listeners who either forgot or didn't experience the Wii when it launched, but emulation was not that common. There were emulators for systems on computers, and there were things like, I mean, there was Bleem, uh, Bleem on Dreamcast, where you could buy a PlayStation 1 emulator for your Dreamcast. So it's not like, and that was a commercial product that you could see ads for in the back of EGM and stuff. Um, so emulation was not new, per se. Uh, in fact, I mean, you can do a whole deep dive into the history of emulation, and you can see where computers and other platforms have been doing emulation of previous platforms for a super long time. But in terms of common commercial, you know, ease of access emulation, you're limited to fan created emulators that were distributed online for not that many platforms where today, if you can think of a platform, you can emulate it right with ease. And there's a dedicated group of people who are working to optimize and make that emulation better even down to i mean just the other week there was a, a video i saw pop up in my feed uh, about the state of playstation 4 emulation on pc which like it we would not have had that i mean that's the equivalent of being in 2005 2006 well maybe not maybe longer than that but either way and having yeah no 2005 and having a ps2 emulator right or something like that like it that did not happen or exist. And for Nintendo to announce the virtual console for the Wii, where for five bucks a piece, you could buy old classic games, where, again, like today, we have an entire, there are scenes, there are scenes within scenes within scenes of people who gather and collect. There are stores dedicated to selling old video games. And that you can pretty easily go get a copy of Super Mario Brothers. I mean, uh, the or, market's or, so big that the f- f- for the console manufacturers themselves are thinking about ways. Like, think of Microsoft and how everything kind of goes backwards for yes. you know, the most part. Um, Sony try and stuff. Don't. Yeah, you're, you're good. <laughs> you don't need to. But then also, I mean, that's a great point too. Like, we've had Sega, Sony, Nintendo, uh, Konami with the... Turbo Graphics Mini and all like they've all made their own dedicated emulation boxes that they've sold in the last five years as well. Um, there's a lot. It's very different today than it was, you know, 15 years ago when the Wii was launching. And so, Virtual Console, novel idea, uh, gave us the ability to buy and play those games uh, in a modern format with ease, uh, which was super smart because it probably kicked off exactly where we're at today right like just the ability to play those old things at a much easier rate i mean that i don't know that it directly led to right like you can't you can't say that they wouldn't have gotten there but like we then later got things like playstation classics on the ps3 we uh everything else has followed since um which is my roundabout way of getting to i remember being very excited that i could buy nintendo and an entertainment system and Sega Genesis games on this platform. I never owned a Super Nintendo, but knowing that I could experience some of those games that I'd never played, that was the Wii was the first place I experienced a link to the plat past uh Super Metroid um stuff like I don't know Contra 3 like you know those things that I had just never played that hit virtual console I remember playing there for the first time. And TurboGrafx-16 was another one where that logo popped up. And TurboGrafx was one of the most supported platforms outside of first-party stuff on Wii, from my recollection. Uh, it seemed like there were always new TurboGrafx games hitting that. And they were relatively cheap. Um, I don't think they were quite as much as like the N64 stuff. They were, in some cases, I think they were less than Super Nintendo. 
nonetheless, Bomberman 93 came out, and I don't know if it was like, you know, one of those weekly oneup.com or IGN things that was like, hey, this game's coming out and you should play it, or if it was just hosting a weekly get together with people to eat pizza and play video games meant I needed to branch out and find as many multiplayer games as I could uh, to keep things fresh uh, when Guitar Hero and Smash Brothers and WarioWare had exhausted their, well, maybe not exhausted. We, those kind of are timeless, but Bomberman became the thing. And I remember playing it obviously there, and we'll talk about the multiplayer in a bit, but Coming back around to the single player, that was the time I'd spent the most with single player. Like, working my way through each stage, defeating each boss, trying out new power-ups, trying out new whatever. And there's the core gameplay of a single player Bomberman game is a combination of skill, timing, and, I don't know, input. (laughs) Like, there's stuff, there's times where the you're moving in one direction or you try and quickly get out of a space and you just realize, oh crap, I screwed myself. You hit the button too quickly to put the bomb down and you trap yourself. And that happens in multiplayer too, but... Um, I would add a patience. Yeah, you have to be very deliberate and patient and the further you get, the tougher the stages get with the more enemies and characters on screen. It's, it's tough to combat everything. Um, yeah, I don't have a ton more about the single player to say. I think that it's um of the Bomberman single player campaigns I've toyed around with, it seems to kind of set the standard. I think when you look at it contemporary contemporarily, you know, this is it had one world of each flavor. Um this was out in late 92, so we're following, you know, Mario 1. I'm, what am I doing? I'm out of Mario World. I mean, yeah, Mario 1 as well, but Super Mario World, which, you know, debuted in 90 and had all of the stages and varieties that it did. I, I think the Bomberman, like, of that era, this starts to plant its flag in what Bomberman could and should be. That's my overall. Anything else in single player from either of you? Um, I think the coolest thing about it was able to, like, the power-ups would, would stack and just continue the, the carryover. Um, and there was some of that that you had access to in the single player that you didn't have access to in the, in the multiplayer. So there was that advantage as well. Um, but other than that, I mean, it's... It's it's like they're not too different, but I'm glad that it does exist to just give you something to chew on in between party modes, I guess, you know? It, yeah, it, it's, 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 it's like a story, but not really a story, but at the same time, you're like brushing up on your skills and you're still getting experience and all that stuff in there. And there is a story. If you want to dive deep into it, you can certainly do that. Um... Before we talk about multiplayer, let me just throw this out there. Uh, we talked about the history of Bomberman a little bit. It started uh, from Load Runner. You know, one of the enemy characters looked like Bomberman. And that would be the, the basic influence for the first Bomberman game. Um, and when it came to America, we retained the name Bomberman. Uh, But when I went to Europe, Bomberman had multiple different names, depending on its release. So one of them was Dynablast, which that sounds pretty straightforward. The other one is Eric and the Floaters. Which... That just sounds like a band. It sounds like a band where, like, everybody... uh, Yeah. You know where I'm going with that. (laughs) Yeah. Uh... What is the context with that one? Do you know? I have no... I tried to find it, uh, but this was when it was released on the Spectrum. uh, Or the ZX Spectrum, if you are from over there. Never in my life. I've never... Eric and the Floaters. 
Could you imagine that title over the 360 Bomberman cover art? Oh my gosh, I really would like that. Sounds that sounds like an itch project, like waiting to happen. <laughs> Written in like a death metal font or something. Just Eric and the I was picturing like Comic Sans on like a really crappy, like the uh, I don't know, hand drawn box art. Did you play that one? No, I should. Uh, Bomberman Zero was that what it was? Yeah, Act Zero or something like Act that. Act Zero, right, right, right. Or Zero yeah, Act, yeah. maybe? Yeah, no. Did you? I can't remember if I did. I, like, I feel like I might have tried it, but I honestly can't can't confirm it. Yeah, that game is a fever dream. Um, that <laughs> I, I saw the box with. art. I just pulled it up. Oh, you've yeah, not yeah. seen this game before? No, dude, I barely know anything about Bomberman. I know there's, it, a, this there's is... an R, there was an online that died, and an R2, and a few yeah. in the past. And by this few, is the... a lot. Yeah, this is this is the edgiest one. Yeah, uh, this is something. <laughs> is it Zero Axe? Is it or what's the name? It's of Act it? Zero. It's Act Zero. Act Zero. Okay. And while yeah. we're revisiting history, Hero is the one you're referring to as the platformer esque one. Sixty four was more your main kind Top of bomber man. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because Hero was like part RPG. Like you, like you leveled up, I believe too. Oh, that makes sense. So let's talk about the uh, the cream of this game, which is the multiplayer. Um, I mentioned I I first played this on the Wii. Where had you guys played this on the Wii? Did you play any of the TurboGrafx stuff on the Wii? Did any of that stand out to you, or was your first time playing it this this go around here? What was this go around? I really have not played a lot of TurboGrafx stuff. Um... Yeah, I did not really explore that virtual console as much as I should have. I think income had something to do with it. I think that's where like our three or four, however far apart we are, comes into play there. Because I think yeah, you're on the cusp of income, and I'm not. Yeah. Uh, so I, I didn't, I didn't spend as much money as I should have. And when I did, it was usually 64 stuff. Like that was the first time right. I played Mario 64. Um, I had played Star Fox 64, but I properly played it through and stuff. But um, no, I never got into the Turbo Graphic stuff or Neo Geo or any of that. Really, just like kind of like 64 SNES. I, this is, I mean, I know this is not Bomberman specific, but do you have an interest in it? After we've played a couple of PC Engine or Turbo Graphics games this year, has there been anything that's made you like want to explore that library more? Oh, I mean, yeah, I think I think just as, like, time has gone on, not even just, like, this season, just, like, doing this and having more, just, like, just, like, history knowledge of stuff and just kind of going back to see, like, where ideas came from. Um, especially, like, uh, what were we, like, something like, like Metal Gear was always like that foreign one, right? Like it was on yeah. what was that PC? What was it? Um, what's the console? The first uh, Metal Gear. Yeah, um, that was I think technically on Famicom, right? No, it was on. Um, oh no, no, no! I'm sorry, that was on MSX. Uh, yeah, like stuff like like going back to see like those types of libraries and, and stuff like that. I think that's where like that inspiration to see some of the stuff came from. But I haven't really gone back yet because i don't have well i guess i got emulators but i haven't found found a thing to go back to yet as we go go across these things i feel like i don't know if they're still even readily or or whatever available but i feel like a good gift for you would be the pc engine mini or the turbo graphics mini whatever the heck they are just so you have like a here's a finite library to just screw Mm. around with you know what i mean because there's way too much if you start diving down and, and looking for things but yeah um anyway yeah mark what about you i mean do you feel like you're drawn to any turbo graphics stuff after bomberman and we played devil's crush earlier this year did we have any other pc engine stuff this year i'll answer um, that you answer yeah. <laughs> i'll figure that out i mean i would i would definitely be interested in finding more games that hit like a similar vibe to devil's crush or something like of that nature. Um, I, I do like that. Like turbo graphics felt like it had like that, that was a more true space for like arcade 
almost arcade accurate like stuff like like Super Nintendo could do it here and there, but they were still limited to what they could do, you know. But for some reason, Turbo Graphics felt more true to its source material if it did have one. That that's that's the vibe that I get from it. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's it's definitely like uncharted territory for me. I'm like similar like with Matt. I was. Like, I didn't get many of the virtual console stuff, but that was mostly because I was late to the party to even owning a Wii. Like, I probably owned a Wii just for Skyward Sword. Right, yeah. You, and then, you and, yeah, then, like, the Wii U happened. So then I basically just switched to that. But then so you even could play through catch that, up on Wii while nothing came out on Wii U. <laughs> right. And then, <laughs> um, but, like, some virtual console stuff, I, I would get through through Wii U. Like, once they added, like, Game Boy Advance and... Uh, stuff but like don't that. worry, Mark. Every Wii U game that was important is now on Switch, so now you can play catch up again. <laughs> yeah, but There's even like my my like even my 3DS. I think my 3DS was more so of the virtual console. Yeah. Uh, home. Uh, that was. Yeah. I I beat Mario One for the first time on that. I beat Zelda One and Two for the first time on that. Like, I I got I got to catch up on a lot of things through that. Um, but yeah, the Turbo Graphics never was wasn't even a thought in my mind. Like it just wasn't. I was like, what do you have on here? Like, solitaire? And then, like, I just moved on. Like, I was very ignorant to <laughs> that that system. Or it just had games that were maybe, like, that were region-locked. and I, Or I just thought that they mm-hmm. were. Like, I didn't, didn't think it was that well, like, known of a thing in America. So I just yeah. didn't have any research. But, yeah, after all this time now in between playing what, what we have played, um, I'm definitely more curious to jump into that and see what else it has to offer. Valus 3 was the other one this year we did. So we did Valus 3, right. uh, Devil's Crush, and Bomberman 93. I'll say, and I, I feel like I'd be remiss not to say, especially with uh, our friend Ben more than likely listening, uh, you, Mark, especially, should check out New Topia, which is, mm. if you were going to make a Zelda game on the Turbo Graphics, that would be New Topia. Um, Okay. Are yeah, the, they, are the are the East games on there? Some are on there, yeah, I believe. Um there's a weird thing where like a lot of games came out on PC eighty eight or PC uh or or MSX. Um and then mm-hmm. some were ported. There's a very strange uh like lineage of things between computer game and console game. Especially when it comes yeah. to the PC engine in Japan, and then of those things that came over to America on Turbo Graphics, it's it's a little strange. N- Newtopia sounds familiar, but yeah, that one yeah. was uh, a cool Zelda esque video game. Yep. Multiplayer. Uh, this one in particular, especially on the again the Wii, we were playing games at the time where we were still playing some GameCube games, like we were playing smash melee on the wii with four gamecube controllers plugged into the top of the wii we were playing uh wii sports we're playing some other things but all of them maxed out at four players then here comes bomberman 93 and you could play with four wii remotes turned on their side and with a gamecube controller plugged into the top of the wii you could hold the r button while booting into bomberman 3 to activate the fifth player controller and then you could all play bomberman you could play five player bomberman which on the turbo graphics there was a weird multi tap uh that allowed you to play five players on the wii you had to do it that way but i remember like that being cool because i mean as we've continued the tradition of the we don't do it weekly anymore now that we're a lot older and whatever, but uh, we've here continued the Friday night pizza party tradition. And, you know, it's, we end up with a lot more than five people at these things uh, and a lot more than four even. So it's tough to sort of, okay, well you guys hang out over there and just talk or something and wait till everybody dies. And then, Oh, were you having fun? Well, time to give the controller to that person. So this, let us do that with one fewer person people. Uh, and have a fifth controller on hand. Um, and that was the stuff I remember from Bomberman 93 the most, was the multiplayer stuff, those close calls, those, like, who's going to win kind of scenarios, which you both got to experience uh, a few weeks ago 
what was did it meet what you were expecting or or where did bomberman 93 multiplayer go for you mark uh it was about what i expected and but to be fair i have played a lot of bomberman games on various platforms and i you could just tell that they stick to their formula pretty well they don't stretch too far from it and we're not going to mention act zero anymore um <laughs> but you know like with them with the multiplayer depending on your player um you are going to be positioned in a certain spot every time so that could either be an advantage or a disadvantage uh depending how you go about it i guess it's all up to you at the same time but i was always in the middle <laughs> so um it's it is a little unsafe in the sense that you don't have your own corner to to be in when you first start out. Everyone is working towards the center. <laughs> so it's like trying to get power-ups is a little tough because whatever that it could be a disadvantage depending on, on, on the stage. Um But at the same time, you know, it's it's fine. There there was some I, I do enjoy that type of chaos as well. I think that is the point of that type of multiplayer, you know. Um no matter where you're at, it's never going to take long to have all your, to be fully exposed and, you know, try to get attacked or, or whatever. Um, but yeah, it's, it, it was, it was about what I expected and that is not a bad thing. Matt, did you feel like you had a good run in multiplayer Bomberman or did you get snubbed over and over? No, I had a good run. I'm doing that peace sign a lot. Um, no, uh, and kind of, <laughs> kind of answer, uh, you know, Mark's question again. I, yeah, this was, uh, what I remembered. This was, um, yeah, like what I, what I briefly got to experience with like one other person when, you know, when, when the, uh, multiplayer stuff was available in Super Nintendo, I had played R with you guys multiplayer before same formula, you know, X amount of years later. Um, no, but like, I think the the thing that really stands out is like, it is chaos, right? There is just, especially when you get five people on the screen and they're, like the middle is not even like safe, like, <laughs> like it, nothing safe. So I think it like it blend, it almost blends like skill and randomness in like a way where like anyone's competitive, no matter how much you have played previous Bombermans. Um, you know, like, us three were playing, but, like, the other two people that were potentially playing, well, I think Ben has experience, but, like, you know, the other, like, the fifth person may not have had experience, but, like, they may not won, like, the match where they won, like, five rounds or however, I think we played three, whatever the setting was, but, like, they would pick off a round here and there, um, and, like, the skill level probably clearly wasn't at ours, but, like, they still picked off rounds just because, like, Someone get like a skull. They have diarrhea bombs, mm -hmm. and then it's just it's game over. Or like you get the skull, you start to go super fast for some reason, and then you run right into a bomb that is like on the other end of the screen that you're not looking at or whatever. Um, and I think that's what this game is like very good at. It's like it is skill. Like there is a level of like if you're good at this game, you're gonna have an edge. But at the same time, you could also be brought back to earth just because of. Hey, how chaotic things get towards like the end game, especially when the when you get when the timer runs out and the border mm -hmm. starts closing in, kind of forcing it's the OG battle royale. Like the gas is coming in, you gotta get into the circle and yeah. duke it out. Yeah, I did appreciate the our one friend who was able to just have a conversation with other people, not touch the controller at all, and then still pull off some wins in between uh, in the very last 30 seconds of the, the match ending. That was fun to watch. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's... I also noticed when we played it this time that we kind of forcefully or abruptly stopped playing. Um, we could have kept that one game on the screen the entire night. Once it got going, I feel like. I don't think anyone was necessarily tired of it. I think it just kind of... I don't even remember. It was probably me. I, I don't know. But at one point, we, we were just like... We tried Saturn. That's what broke it. That's the problem. Right. We tried to do the Saturn <laughs> Bomberman and the 
yeah, the Mr. Stuff's not there <laughs> quite yet. Uh, that's, yeah, that was the, the shift. But yeah, had I not done that and just kept us in Turbo Graphics, I think we could have played Bomberman until the sun came up. Which, that's the stuff I remember of this game. Um, and we did check out a little bit of Bomberman 94 just for comparison as well, which adds mountable uh, animal vehicle Oh, creatures? right, yeah. That's, I, yeah, that's yeah. What I, I forget their names, but I, I love those things. Yeah, they were pretty they're, good. They're like the Yoshis of that game. Yeah, yeah. Well, we've good luck figuring the... out which one you have <laughs> and what it does. <laughs> right, yeah, because they're all different and, yeah. Yeah, each color had their own ability or whatever. At the very least, it gave you an extra life if you never could figure out what. Right, yeah, exactly. Just like a Yoshi. <laughs> Just, yeah. <laughs> Uh, we only get to do this a few more times, but it's time we add Bomberman 93 to the list. Listeners, if you'd like to follow along with the list, you can do so over at thefreecheese.com slash the list, where we've been ranking all 45 games from season 10. It's, uh, yeah, we are... Listen, listeners, we will have a few more things to say about season eleven in a few weeks. But I can tell you that I'm getting excited to see how things continue and change and how everything shapes together. Um, but it should be a a good time. Um, Bomberman ninety three. Hmm. Uh, my favorite part of the episode, especially this type of game right. where it's not an immediate, obvious placement, so we just kind of groan for a while to fill space. Um, a good producer would edit all this crap out and just get to the part where we rank it. <laughs> but I never said I was good. So, um, anyone have a gut feeling? Yeah. Hit me. Um... Between Parodius and Glylancer. Nice. Okay. It's. I mean, I know that seems kind of low, but I'm. It's. I, I'm. I'm not viewing it negatively. No, I don't. I'm just. I, I think it's a fun time. It's. You know. It's. It's also just what's expected and more on the simple side, which isn't bad, but just. Compared to what we have going on here, I feel like it fits around that area with those games. Like, it reminds me of, like. The thing for me, I was thinking around Proteus as well, like, right in that kind of middle of our list. And the thing that stands out to me with this game in particular is, like, it, I wrote this in my review, but, like, it not only, like, reminded me, playing it 15 years after I had first played it, reminded me of the importance of Bomberman, but it, it reminded me of the importance of getting together with people to play games, which is something that today, especially, I mean, when we all hung out a few weeks back and played this, that was the first time we'd all hung out in almost three years. Um, mm. Not that we haven't seen each other as things have gotten somewhat back to whatever. Uh, but yeah. as a huge group like that, it's been a long time. And this was like, I don't, Bomberman, that to me is synonymous with, you know, hanging out with people and anybody on that couch could pick up the controller and make their way through the game. Like, no matter who it was, whether they'd heard yeah. of Bomberman before, like, you move, you press a button, and that's it, right? Like, obviously there's some other mechanics and stuff, but... They um, could have eaten a piece of pizza in the middle of a round of one. For sure. We saw that. Yeah. Yes, so, for sure. In a way, like Bomberman is half the experience. It's not. It's yeah, you know. Um, but at the core of it, like there is a solid game that is just like uh, unlike anything else. Like the core of what Bomberman is, and I think Bomberman '93 is Bomberman at its best. If I look back, like when we were planning out games for season ten, so this is the last game. I mean, obviously, there's only two left. This is the last game on my list for season ten. And it's one where when we were looking at what to do game wise, I remembered this game. And then I started thinking, should I explore one I hadn't played? Should I revisit this one? Where should I go? And like, it was this game because of 
just how solid and good the this entry was. Um, still, I think Parodius X Men Two, like in that area, like I don't think this one climbs too much higher for me. As we start going up the list, I'm like, mm, I think some of these other games are stronger on their own than this is. Um, I think this is great, but I don't think it's, you know, fully up there. Right. I like it better than Parodius. Between Parodius and X-Men is kind of where I'm at, like the new 24. But Matt, yeah. we, we've kind of steamrolled you. What do you think? Oh, no, I was actually the highest. Um, I had it between Double Dash and Tricky. Um, but oh. uh, I think you kind of talked me down. You we were saying about, like, Bomberman on its own versus the party part of it. Um, I will say, like, my absolute, I mean, we're, we're past it, but my absolute bottom basement going into this was it being above Perfect Dark, because this and Perfect Dark have very similar vibes for me, where, like, mm. multiplayer is the strongest suit, and it does it very well. The single player can, and this single player, it's like, it, it's more, like, slow and boring. Yes. Yeah, then, the problem with this single player, yeah, it, it is Then it slow, being that's... complicated and obtuse and whatever. So I, that's like a bonus point over Perfect Dark for me. Um, yeah, I'm like... Yeah, right, right. Hmm. What, sh- what do I remember about X-Men 2 the most? Me not playing the end? Or me mm. playing everything else? <laughs> and it's that battle I, I, can, I can compete with. Uh... Ah, uh, I'm probably below X Men. I did like that game a lot, unexpectedly. Yeah. yeah, I feel good with this at the new twenty four. Is that is that a lock? I think that's a lock. I dig it. Uh, we've only got one week remaining before we wrap everything up. Uh, Matt, while I update the list, you want to tell the listeners what they can expect to hear us talk about next week? We will be getting into the Christmas spirit with Parasite Eve. That is correct. Um, So, get your opera dress on. Get ready to get sick, I guess. (laughs) Combust? (laughs) Yeah, there's a lot of fun to have with Parasite (laughs) Eve. Uh, So come back, hang out with us. Uh, as we close out, see, well, we're not close out. We have technically two more episodes in season 10, but next week is our final ranking of an episode. So come back, hang out with us, talk Parasite Eve uh, on the PlayStation. Other than that, thank you, Mark. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, listener, for listening. See you next week.